What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of your Winnipeg Jets Legend B AGM mode. In the last episode we got year 4 underway. We're currently 4-3-0. Oh. Not, you know, not the greatest start but we are only 7 games in so I'm not going to freak out too much here. Uh, we do have a couple things to address though. Uh, you know, the first thing is with the GM mode being quote unquote unrealistic, uh, there's a couple things I want to say. A, it's a video game so uh, you want to build the best team possible to win a Stanley Cup, that's totally true, and is having 30 legends really realistic either? Like, everyone's saying, oh, X-Tech, you suck, dislike the video, blah, 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 I'm gonna go rah, kill myself because of this video. Like, it's a video game, for one, and, the, I mean, there's not, it's not realistic to have 30 legends introduced into a GM mode. I made a rule myself to make the GM mode more quote-unquote realistic uh, to not go ahead and trade for any legends. I didn't do that. I stuck to my rule. There was a legend that happened to be in free agency. He's got chemistry with Solani from playing in Anaheim and Colorado. Why not go pick him up? It's the perfect match. Yes, we have two 90 overall snipers. Sorry, 92 and 93 overall snipers. Uh, yeah, so what? Cro the Penguins have Malkin, Crosby, and Lemieux. And like the Oilers have Taylor Hall, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Jordan Eberle, uh, you know, Wayne Gretzky, and all their other snipers. Leon Dreisaitl gonna can come up. Like, there's a, gonna be some unrealistic things. Obviously, this stuff would never happen in the in the real NHL, but just some comments make me want to, you know, shake my head. It's like, what are you thinking? But, of course, it's a GM mode, and it's supposed to be for fun. It's entertainment. It's entertainment, and if I think I'm gonna make something happen that's gonna be entertaining and you guys are gonna like, I'm gonna pull the trigger that's why we got Paul Correa. Moving on, we have two comments here. The first one comes from Paul Bissonnette. Biz nasty, baby. He says, X-Tech, I think you should play Shaw as the third line center since he has decent face-offs and, and he plays center in real life. You should move Perot down to the fourth line and uh, move Skapsky up to the third line so he can develop properly. Um, as for Andrew Shaw, he only has 70 face-offs, so they're not fantastic. I am going to move him over here. What's Gallagher? See, Gallagher's a right-wing as well. He's got zero. This whole third line is just slacking right now. Uh, Matthew Perot has 80 face-offs. He's got great face-offs. I don't know what you guys are talking about. He has great face-offs. Something's not right here, though. This whole line is really lacking right now. I mean, we're only seven games in. They have basically no points. So I'm going to leave it as it is right now. Matthew Perot has great face-offs. He's a solid third liner. I would like to get someone like Cody Eakin. You guys know I love Cody Eakin. He would kind of be perfect for there. And Skapsky's only listed as a fourth liner, so I don't want to play him as a, as a third liner yet. I don't want to rush him. We will give him some power play time. I'm going to give him some four-man power play time. See, yeah, yeah I, already, I already did, so that should be totally fine. I'm going to give him the big minutes there, because he is going to be pretty deadly uh, once he starts to progress. So I moved around the Andrew Shaw and Brendan Gallagher a, l a little bit, but I'm happy with Matthew Perot. But this leads something that maybe we'll have to trade Matthew Perot. Next comment from Brandon, he says, you need to check out to see if D'Angelo is ready for the big time. Uh, if he is, he needs to play, and Larson will have to be traded, which kind of sucks. I really like Philip Larson. We picked him up in free agency, I believe, in year number one, and we kind of molded him into a really good two-way uh, defenseman. He's pretty decent, 83 overall. He's got decent stats. Like, he doesn't hurt the team at all, not having the greatest year this year, but uh, I mean, again, we're only seven games in and we're not playing too hot, but uh, basically he says, maybe you can get some picks for Larson if uh, D'Angelo is ready, and it looks like he is. He is listed as a top six, so I don't want to mess up D'Angelo. He's got nine points in eight games in the AHL this year. He's going to come up, and a couple of you guys are like, oh, you didn't check to see if Comrie is the starting goalie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he he is not yet. He is not a starting goalie. Where is he actually? Comrie is not here. Oh, there he is. Eric Comrie had a heart attack for a minute there. He's still listed as a backup. So I'm not going to trade Reimer yet. Once Comrie is listed as a starter, Reimer is out the door. But that being said, we do have to trade Larson here. So we could maybe make something happen here where we do trade maybe Larson and, and Perot maybe for a really good third liner because we don't need Larson and Perot is just kind of an extra. He is making 1.9, so he does have some cap there. But He's been really good. He's been, you know, th 
30 points. There's really no reason to trade him. So I think I just might get a decent prospect, maybe like a second round pick for Larson. I can easily get a second round pick. Uh, who was uh, who got the first overall pick last year? I don't even remember. Uh, who could we trade? You know, we traded with uh, traded with San Jose before. They won't give us. A second for Larson. Who will give us a pick for Larson? Why will you not give us a pick? Why is it? Uh, they have more than 45 skaters. So I guess lots of teams have the max skater limit. I like to get a second for Larson. If not, I'll get a mid-level prospect. Uh, but then again, we could, you know, let's see Dallas here. Just see, just look at Cody Eakin. What is he looking like? Cody Eakin, yeah, his trade value is a little bit too high. He's basically the perfect, he's basically a much better um, Matthew Perot. Not saying in points-wise, Wise, but overall stats. He's got 80 faceoffs. He's going to be a you know 15 goal, 15 assist type guy, 30 to 35 points. I'm happy with Matthew Perot. He's got 80 faceoffs. I am, I couldn't be happier with him. So let's just go ahead and look for a uh, decent prospect. Maybe we'll go get another center prospect because we really have none. We have Nicholas Patan, and that's kind of it. We got Ty Comrie and Braden Point, but I don't know if they're really going to be anything. So I kind of just want to go ahead and uh, look for some mid-level uh, prospects here, like Radic Fasco. Will that go through? He is uh, four stars. He has been in the AHL for a long time. I don't know if he's going to progress. He's already 23, 77 overall. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get. We'll uh, have a look around the NHL here, and I'll and I'll uh, show you guys if I find anyone. Uh, holy shit! Look at Reed Gardner. Look at this guy's stats. Look at his skating category. Look at his shooting category already. Look at his deking category. Holy shit! Reed Gardner, first round pick of last year. His trade value is kind of high. Plus, they won't take his cap. I mean, we could probably add some picks. We'd have to take some cap back here. Is there anyone that they're paying lots of money to? that they just don't really need. Uh, see here. Uh, doesn't David Runblad, he's 82 though. He wouldn't uh, it would just be kind of a waste. Uh, can I retain some cap from him? How much do they need? They need uh, 1.7 million. So ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to work this out, but Reed Gardner looks really really sick. Yeah, it's just too we're not going to be able to get Reed Gardner. Maybe in the future though. He he might be really really sick. Definitely have to keep an eye on him. Still trying to find a decent trading partner here. There's really like there's a bunch of like decent prospects But I just don't want to get you know someone who's not gonna do anything I want to get someone who I know is gonna be a legit NHL -er. because you know Larson's a really good defenseman just it just kind of sucks that he's kind of being pushed off of this squad But he is you know, he's a decent defenseman. We're gonna take a look here uh, Gilbert I want like a I want more of like a potential third liner I want like a two-way forward like a grinder pro Prospect centerman that kind of be perfect. Oh, yeah, I like this guy Johnny Corneal. He is uh, 20 years old three and a half star But look at his stats 80 defensive awareness 81 discipline really good shooting category on him I'm gonna go for this guy. Maybe that will probably go through. Yeah, that will definitely go through We'll maybe even squeeze like a fourth out of this try to get as much as uh, Possible here. So can we squeeze a fourth round pick maybe even a third? No, we'll go for the fourth here Cornell and a fourth for Lars there you go. We got a decent prospect and we got a fourth round pick. So that's nice. Uh, we see Nikolai Elliers. He's listed as a depth forward, so we're not going to play him in the NHL this year. We are going to bring up D'Angelo, though. Uh, Paye is a fourth. That really does not matter. Uh, JC Lippon's a fourth, too, but you know, we just do not have the room right now. So we're going to go ahead and bring up D'Angelo, and I'll show you guys what, this, what the squad is looking like. All right, so I went ahead and put D'Angelo in here. He is ready for the big time. He is a 80 overall. Just gross stats on him. He's going to be so sick. Once Dustin Bufflin and Tyler Myers, once they start to get a little bit older, uh, I mean, more Dustin Bufflin than Tyler Myers. But once Bufflin is out of the way, D'Angelo is going to carry the load for sure. So I got to put uh, what's his name down in the minors really quickly. Johnny Cornell, the guy who we just traded for. There you go. Go to the minors. And I got to do our HL team, and then we can get some simulation done uh, thank you though Philip Larson he has been very solid for our for our squad just kind of you know prospects have to come up and changes have to be made so let's make that move right here let's go ahead and put him uh, Johnny Cornell uh, Ryan Olson right there Elliers Pae can go there Pae can actually play fourth line because he's not going to get any better McAndrews there Cornell point we're all golden we're ready to go enough of the trading let's get some simulation completed here we'll get a couple of 
of months completed, and then we will uh, we will see where we're at. Tom Gilbert is placed on waivers, 34 years old. We do not need him listed as a, as a top six. We do not need him though. We got to string some wins together here. Let's get the wins early. There you go, big win against Florida. Uh, Andre Palat leading in goals eight games through the regular season. Uh, we actually lose in overtime there against the Arizona Coyotes. Now against the Blues, we're gonna try to get their revenge from last year. The stacked St. Louis Blues. You guys, we ousted them and we win actually two to one there. That was a really good playoff series last year. That was awesome. Up against Columbus, the 6 0 oh, 4 Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's give them a regulation loss, boys. Come on. There you go. 3 1. 7 3 and 1, just like that. That's how you that's how you that's how you turn the first seven games of your uh season around. There's an 8 2 win. Holy crap. Putting up goals. Look at Paul Correa. 15 helpers already. That is actually unreal. And up against Toronto here. Let's keep the winning streak alive. Ooh, we lose in OT. Uh, let's get this the rest of this month done. Then we'll look at the stats and whatnot. But this could be a really scary year. This could be a year where we uh, where we where we get the little push over the first and over the second round. We've been stuck there for a little while. James Ryan with the big four nothing shutout there. Um, but I think this is gonna be the year with Paul Correa, with you know everything that's kind of happened with our team over the past nine months since the postseason. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a really good year for us. Since we're up against the St. Louis Blues here, I'm gonna give Eric Comrie. Oh, he's already getting the. Start. There we go. We're gonna give Eric Comrie the start. The St. Louis Blues worst nightmare from last year in the playoffs. Let's go. First period. One nothing. There you go, Andre Palat. He's having a great year. Period number two. Still one nothing on the one goal from Andre Palat. Oh man, Eric Comrie, just the St. Louis Blues worst nightmare. Keith Kachuk, you motherfucker. I remember you from last year. Oh, Keith Kachuk, my worst nightmare. David Back is short-handed on Comrie. Oh, they're not being nice to the kid. Oh no, Ty Ratty gets another one, and this one is over. Thought I would uh, kickstart their nightmares again from last year, but they kick it to us three to one there. Uh, let's go up against go the end of this month. We'll probably get another month done, then that then that will be the end of the episode. Get some more simulation completed here against Dallas nine six and three win three nothing. There you go. Every time, I mean, like James Reimer is just so good. Like he won the Vesna Trophy last year. He's constantly up there for wins and like 3 nothing there he's really really good like he's an amazing goaltender or was that uh, I think that was actually Comrie he got that win there uh, th did they take him back after the 2-1 victory up against the really good Buffalo Sabres and Dominic Hasek 95 overall we lose 4 nothing. Hasek sticks it to us up against Stamkos here and the uh, and the Bolts and we win 4-3 there you go let's say so they did put James Reimer back in in. Uh, Paul Correa up against your old team. Ooh, 6-3. Did have f uh, four helpers, though. Or, I think three or four helpers. That was, that was pretty good. Uh, it's the waiver thing. Okay, so let's see where we are here. Uh, waivers. Okay. It's team standings. We are fourth in the central. Only four points out of number one, though. Uh, goals were almost up there. Probably like, ooh, look at Keith Yandel, a defenseman all the way up there. Uh, but goals nine were probably like 15th place. Assists were number two. Ooh, there you go with 21 from Paul Correa. He's putting up some points and wins. We are number six goals against average. We are not up there and save percentage. We're not up there, but look at number one, Manny Fernandez. Of course, let's get one more month done and then I'll look after the stats and then that will be it for this episode. Actually lose uh, five two there to the blue. They want to get all the revenge they possibly can from us kicking them out of the playoffs in round number one last year. Let's go defenseman here in uh, the WHL. Oh, there you go. A uh, couple games here. We got Toronto. We got Edmonton. So we got Matt Sundin and we got Wayne Gretzky. This is not going to be easy. Let's go, boys. Come on. Big victories here. Should be huge victories. Well, there you go. Big win there against the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. So I want to get the victories now. I hate having you know to to struggle to get them after. Ooh, look at this. Oh my God. The Edmonton Oilers cannot pull it together. Even with Wayne Gretzky, they still don't even have a 500 team. I think maybe what we 
should do is help Edmonton out a little bit. Maybe once James Reimer is time to be traded, maybe look at Edmonton for a potential trade partner because they they have uh, Victor Fast and Ben Scriven still, and they cannot pull it together. That is so rough. I feel bad for them. They have all this upfront talent but cannot put it together. Uh, 6-2 loss there against the Coyotes. Big game against the Kings. They have a really good record. Quick's playing awesome. The whole team's playing great. Come on, boys. Let's get a big victory. Ooh, 3-0 nothing loss. Ouch. We got to change it up a bit here. Uh, we need to put Comrie in because I think uh, Reimer has been struggling the, the past couple games. Uh, goalies, Reimer, what's his record looking like? He's 11-8, uh, and eight, so it's not fantastic. And Comrie is 4-3, and three, so really not fantastic either. But let's give the kid the start here against the Minnesota Wild. This is going to be a huge start. You know we hate the Wild. You know we don't like them. Come on, let's get a big victory, Comrie. There you go, buddy. He gets a huge victory against the Minnesota Wild and loses 4-2 against the Florida Panthers. That's fine. Uh, again, a couple more games here until we're about to end this one off. So we're 16-11-3. Not fantastic. I feel like we need to put some more goals on the board. I feel like Palat only nine goals. That's kind of uh, it's kind of weak for the offensive talent that we do have. Korea, though, 26 assists. The guy is a monster. Huge victory against the Hawks there. Hurdle's got nine goals as well. Looks like the second line's producing really, really really well, which is awesome. Up against Carolina, have a similar record to us with Ron Francis as their legend. Let's stick it to him, boys. 4-2. There you go. Korea, 9 goals, 28 assists. He's doing it all. He doesn't need any help. Looks like uh, looks like he's going to fit in perfectly on this, on this team, which is absolutely unreal. Um... 17-13-5 with the Stars with 96 overall, Tyler Sagan, and we win actually, there you go, 4-3, so we're on a three-game winning streak, about to end off this month here, uh, we'll quickly check the stats once again, and we'll see where we are at, so uh, we're still fourth in the Central, only five points out though, uh, the gap's kind of getting a little bit bigger each time I check though, uh, goals were not going to be up there, assists were number seven with uh, 29, and points were not up there unfortunately, and wins where number five with James Reimer. So we'll do a quick check of basically everything. We're 11th in the NHL. It's still really early on though. No need to worry. Goals for, yeah, we need to put some more goals on the board because 99 goals, we're 22nd. That's not very good. Goals for per game, we're three goals a game. It's not really too bad, really. Goals against, we're number seven. So our goals heading's playing well. Uh, power play goals, we're number four. Power play percentage, we're number seven. So we're in the top 10. PK, we're 13. It's not bad. Uh, we're much better home than we are away. We're six, three, and one in our last ten. So eh, things could be better, but it could be a lot worse. I'm not gonna freak out quite yet. I'm done trading though for right now. If there's anything you guys think that should happen, I will take your comments into consideration. But check out these stats here. So obviously Paul Korea, 38 points in 33 games. Our whole first line doing pretty good. Shifley could be performing a little bit more. Uh, I mean, it looks like the scoring is kind of spread out this year. Uh, Solani, almost a point a game. Mark Shifley, 25 and 33. Andre Palat, 23 points. That's awesome. 10 goals, though. He's going to have a career year. I can feel it. Uh, Philip Forsberg doing pretty good as well. Truba doing great. Hurdle doing not bad. Uh, Perot's doing pretty good. D'Angelo, 26 games, 7 points in his young NHL career. That's not bad. Skapsky only got 4 points. Gallagher, wow. Galley, what is going on, buddy? Minus 17. That third line is not working out. If we are going to make a change, it's got to be there. Minus 12, minus 17, and minus 8. That third line is holding us down right now. We got to figure something out. Eric Comrie, 5 and 3. Not too shabby, buddy. And then uh, goalies, 14 and 9. So I feel like the third line, we maybe should go grab a player like Cody Egan. You know, maybe that isn't the worst thing. Maybe getting a really good third line center will not hurt our team because all those minuses, that is not good at all. But if you have any suggestions let me know in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next one